All right, hey guys, this video is called uh, the, the Money Rules That I Wish I Would Have Known at 18. Um, growing up being in business and finance and um, basically everything I've learned, I've learned the school of hard knocks. And so there are several, several rules that I wish somebody would have sat me down and talked to me about when I was 18 years old. And so I've been thinking about this over the past few years. This, this has not come lightly because um, I kept adding to it and adding to it and little things just keep popping up. And so I'm at my son's combine today. I literally have hours in the truck that I'm just going to sit here. And so I've been fine tuning this a little bit and I want to share all these with you guys. Um, and it's just really important that you understand where these came from isn't just some made up um, thing. There are real life lessons that I've had to learn the hard way. And here's the thing, guys, a lot of what I'm going to tell you is going to be different than probably what your parents tell you and your everybody else you know. Uh, it's not normal. And you're gonna see that, you're gonna see a trend through a lot of this stuff. Um, so here, I wanna get right into it. And I wanna talk to you about rule number one. I don't even know how many I got so far. We're almost to 30. It's probably gonna be 30, 30 rules of money. Um, so number one, nothing happens without it. That is the most important thing that, that I want you to understand is that there's literally nothing that happens right now without money. And sure, I can, you know, I, I can probably get a, catch a lot of criticism about this one, um, that I'm an ambitious person and I'm always thinking about money and, and, and other things. And, and yes, both of those are absolutely 100% true because you can't do anything without money. I can't sit in this car without money. I can't buy these clothes without money. I can't have food in my belly without money. I can't take my wife on a date without money. Um, I can't pay for my kids' school without money. I can't go to a restaurant without money. I can't put gas in my car without money. Uh, I, you know, let's talk about your faith for a moment because you know this is a big controversy here. Um, churches don't exist without money, right? The people that go to church tithe so that these big buildings get erected to spread the good news about Jesus. So that doesn't happen without money. Yes, I want to be close to God and I want to have a good relationship with him. And, and that is a very, very important aspect of my life. And I'm going to say that's probably number one. But next in line is figuring out this money game. Unless you want to be in a poor house and live on the streets. And obviously, I know you don't want to do that. Because if you're watching this, it's probably on a very, very expensive iPhone. Um, that your parents may have bought you. And I get that. Some of you guys have come from privilege where the things that you buy are just just provided for you. And you've never really understood how hard your parents had to work to put you there. Some of you may watch this video and you're in the exact opposite. You've never had nice things and you wanna take a stand and make a difference for yourself and your family. So the point I'm trying to make here with rule number one is that there's nothing possible to happen without money. The one thing, the pushback that I get, we can have love without money. You can have love for a very short period of time without money. But if you do not have it, it is gonna cause massive stress in your relationship. It's, trust me, you will not be married or with that significant other for very long if you don't have any money. If you can't feed or drink water, if you can't drink water, you're dead in a few days. If you can't eat, you're dead in, I don't know, seven to 10. So I know I'm being extreme there with that, but I want you guys to understand that, that uh, money is very, very important and not enough people talk about it. And that's where I came from at age 16 to 18. Like, I didn't understand all this stuff. I was just working really hard. I was a very hard worker. But I'm not here to talk about me. I want to talk about you. And I want you to make sure that making money is top on your priority list. So that's rule number one. Rule number two, make as much of it as you possibly can. Say that again. Rule number two is make as much money as you possibly can. With your job right now, I want you to be the best possible person in that job. I want you to double down on that job. If, if you are working at a barista, I want you to make coffee and I want you to clean that place better than anybody humanly possible. If you are a salesman, maybe it's for a roofing company or a car salesman or, or any type of sales related industry, you need to sell more. You need to outsell everybody. If you aren't outselling your competition by 50%, then you're not laser focused on selling. You need to be 
obsessed with making this happen, obsessed with making money. Once you get that dialed in right, I want you to work on a side hustle. Something that gives you passion that you don't have to put a whole lot of work into that brings money in, whether it's 500 to 1,000 to $2,000 a month. I want you to think of it in those increments, okay? All right, so making money is important. That was rule number one. Um, and making as much as you can is rule number two. So rule number three is the 60-40 rule. This is a rule I guarantee your parents probably, or anybody else never told you about. So your job is to live off 60% of your income. That's rule number three. So what do you do with the other 40%, Matt? Take the other 40% and that's what you use to invest and or put in, the sa in savings. So when you get your paycheck, let's say it is $2,000 paycheck, it was a good week. All right, or maybe every two weeks, depending on whatever, how you get paid. The net you get, so Uncle Sam's gonna get his piece, they're gonna take that part, part of your pie, right? It is what it is, can't fight that. And you're left with this chunk of money. Let's say that was $2,000. So 60% of that is what you can live off of. 40% goes to savings. So see what I did there? $1,200 you're gonna live off of. The rest, the $800, is gonna to go to savings or and or investments. And do not argue with me. Do not think for a moment that you're allowed to live off 100% of your income. That is the trap that most people are in right now. 95% of people are in this trap. They got too many bills. They got too much month at the end of their money. You guys have heard Dave Ramsey say this stuff all the time. Well, you know what, he is dead set he is so true on that that most people get big houses big cars credit cards we're gonna dive into all that stuff here in a few minutes but this one right here that's why it's rule number three you spend you live so food gas shelter car clothes movies fun stuff vacations travel all that stuff's with the 60 percent the 40% goes into a vault that you never touch. And that is for your base, okay? So that you can live and you can breathe and you don't have to be stressed out of your mind. Guys, most people have a hundred bucks at the end of the month, barely. And they're in massive amounts of debt. Whether that's credit card debt, home debt, auto debt, uh, boat debt, I don't know, RV debt, whatever debt they're in, it's ridiculous. And I don't want you guys to get there. So please follow the 60-40 rule. All right, number four, if you can't pay cash for it, you are not allowed to buy it. If you cannot pay cash for a car, clothes, furniture, whatever, don't buy it. Do not buy it. If you, um, this also, we'll talk about this in a few minutes here, but, but when it comes to real estate, that's a little bit different story, right? Like your home, I think that it's okay that you have a little bit of debt on that. And I can explain more in detail why, but you, you better be putting down a crap ton of money um, when you get that loan. But you should not have auto debt. You should not have um, ATV debt or things that I'm trying to think of all the stupid debts I've had over the years. Definitely had boat debt twice. It was stupid. Should have never done that. Someone should have told me that that is the stupidest investment. When you buy a boat, you better be okay with taking a pile of cash, putting it into a field and setting it on fire. That's what you need to be okay with. Um, so if you can't pay cash for it, do not buy it. Do not get sucked into the gimmick, the gimmick stuff. Let me start my truck back up here. The gimmick stuff, all right? The zero percents and all this crap at the dealerships or they're trying to rope you in or it's only $247 a month. Well, now you're working for that $247,000 or $247 a month. That's not the way it should be, okay? Uh, rule number five, don't waste it. If 
if it's twenty dollars or more and this number may like increase as you get older but right now you're young because this is hopefully you're looking at this when you're 18. if it's twenty dollars or more you need to think exactly how long it took you to earn that twenty dollars so if you're a barista and you're making like i don't know thirteen dollars an hour um i think that's the starting pay in some of these places so it took an hour and a half to make that money well you need to think about that twenty dollar purchase for an hour and a half and if at the end of the hour and a half and you are still okay with making that purchase and it falls into the 60 40 rule so you you technically an hour and a half you actually needed to make 30 dollars because you got to put some away for savings so if you're okay with doing that then you make the purchase um never get pressured into buying anything guys there are some seriously slick talking sales men and women out there and they make you think that the deal is so good um and that it'll never be around tomorrow after you get off the phone with them or after you leave the dealership or 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 the whatever the furniture store whatever you're getting into or whatever you're buying i'm telling you it's a load of shit. and if you feel frustrated with them just hang up if they're putting too much pressure on you but never be pressured to buy anything and never be pressured to do anything with your money that you don't know to be true. And if it doesn't follow these rules, Matt's rules, Mr. Hayes' rules, then you don't do it. And you, you give them my number and I'll talk to them. Sorry, I'm getting riled up here, my bad. Um, number seven, this is the toughest one. You're gonna see all your friends in their 20s driving Teslas and nice new cars and apartments and clothes and going to shows and doing all these things and you're like man they've made it they've made it they're not following my rules because they don't have a penny in the bank they're spending money faster they can get it and that's that is a major problem you're going to be kicking yourself in your 40s and 50s if you get to that point right yes your car's not going to be as nice as theirs your clothes are gonna be a few years old. I did say a few years. Your shoes are gonna be a few months old. It's okay. Fuck them. I don't care what they think and you shouldn't think care what they think either. But influencers and social media has made this whole thing so much worse. Cause you see all these people living in this glitz and glamor lifestyle on social media. Guys, that's just a highlight reel. More than likely they are so shallow on the inside that they're looking for that gratification by your likes and your comments. So I'm speaking from massive experience. I've been down this road in my early 20s. We were in so much debt buying all these things and it meant nothing, it was emptiness. Okay, so never spend tomorrow's money. This is rule number eight. So what do I mean by that? Um, if you can't pay cash for it, don't buy it. If it didn't meet the 60-40 rule, and then it falls into 60 and you don't have the cash to buy it, that's spending tomorrow's money. Spending tomorrow's money is going into debt with a credit card that I'm gonna get here in a second, which is 100% off limits, all right? So spending tomorrow's money, like, let's say, uh, oh, I don't know, a new set of golf clubs, $1,200. I'm like, you know what? I'll just throw that on their credit card and then I'll pay it off in a couple of weeks because I got the money coming in, right? What's the harm? Well, the harm is the discipline behind it. You're not disciplined enough and nobody is disciplined enough to do that. And this leads me to number nine, credit cards. No, no, no freaking no. Never get a credit card. Never, never, never. I don't know how many times I can say never, but absolutely not. Do not give me this shit. Oh, I want to get the points. Oh, I got 0%. Uh, well, I was able to save 15, 10% at Kohl's on this, or a Best Buy credit card offered me 10% off. I'm just gonna pay it off real quick. Guess what, you'll forget. Never buy that damn thing with a 10% off discount. Trust me, it's a way to rope you in. Then they're gonna be shoving ads down your throat about using the credit card. And then you're never gonna get out from under the credit card. And there's always gonna be debt on the credit card. Absolutely no, they're gonna get you somehow, some way. Trust me, these billion dollar companies have, have figured out the science and the secret sauce behind these credit cards. And I don't give a shit what somebody says about building your credit. That is crap. 
You don't need a credit card to build credit, ever. If anything, it's gonna hurt your credit. So, no, I don't know how many times I can say no, and I'm sorry I'm getting all riled up, but this one is, is the biggest one, because so many people are always whipping out these credit cards uh, about, you know, I wanna get my Southwest points, or I wanna get, uh, I wanna get my Disney points, or I wanna get my points over here, or I wanna get my points, my cash points, all this stuff. My points, my points, my points. No, no, not happening. Rule number nine, no credit cards, period. Number 10, you can tell I'm getting emotional about this because I'm just so passionate. I've been wanting to record this for so long. Rule number 10, do not buy an emotion, all right? So this watch or this, Ooh, this drink, this drink, whatever, right? Uh, these pair of sunglasses, whatever it is, it has to be a practical purchase right now. You cannot buy with your emotions, especially don't buy real estate with emotions. But no, it has to be a practical purchase. You are not swimming in buckets of cash. And if you were, you could be putting that money to a much better use rather than just blowing it all over the place. Like I'm gonna go on a shopping spree this weekend or um, I think this is complete bullshit is when someone tells me they just wanna go shopping. So, well, what do you need? Well, I don't know yet, I haven't gotten there. Are you kidding me? Like you just wanna go spend money? Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to Target, I'm gonna go to the mall, I'm gonna, just gonna go to Walmart, wherever the hell you wanna go. Like no, 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 you need to have a list of exactly what you want. And truthfully, this is why I love Amazon you can buy that one thing and it can ship to your house and you don't get suckered into buying 14 more things you ever gone to a store and said i need to get a gallon of milk and you end up with a cart coming out of the store you may not have but have you ever gone to a store looking for one thing and you come with three or four and you didn't even get the one thing you needed that's what i'm talking about buying on emotion number 11 uh, I'm sorry so many of these have been no's and never's and um, totally going against what's in your parents' wallet and what your other people have taught you and your parents have taught you. I am sorry, um, but it's okay. They were wrong. Maybe they need to watch this video. Who knows? Um, number 11, when you're investing, um, and this is one of my favorite topics because I'm a, I'm a serial investor. Um, I love investing. Uh, it's been very, very good for my family and me. Um, always do your due diligence. And I mean always. Down to the last little detail of that investment. Because usually, once you give them that money, whether you wire it or give them a check or the paper trail or whatever or finance it, you know, like if it's real estate or something, um, it's gone. And you're never getting it back and you don't have a chance to renege on the deal so what i'm saying there is the due diligence is very very important here so make sure you're looking at all the details all the paperwork all the inspections and if you don't know how to read the paperwork or the inspections all right you get someone that can that knows how to do it and if you need my help i'll help you um number 12. um never have all your money in one investment so you know the 60-40 rule we're talking about? You live on 60 and you save and invest 40%. Okay, so when you are investing, uh, and this took me to my mid-30s to, to figure out, guys, is that you should never have any of your like stock markets, mutual funds, those type of trading uh, investments. Um, should never have uh, one of them be more than 3% of the overall portfolio. So they should be spread out in multiple categories. That way if one of those companies ever goes down or takes a dive, doesn't completely wipe out your portfolio. Let's say you got all your money in Bitcoin or Dogecoin, oh my God, or uh, Best Buy or Walmart or whatever. And then you hear, you open the paper and one of those companies went, went out of business or Bitcoin tanked. Like that's the purpose because you never cry the blues if this is the case. That's what uh, Mr. Wonderful uh, likes to say. So never more than 3% in one investment. Um, that's not necessarily talking about real estate, but we'll get to that at the end here. Um, never have all your money in one bank account either. So because the FDI, and F, uh, excuse me, F, FC, I don't know, whatever. FDIC insurance um, only goes up to $250,000. 
yeah, I said $250,000 because by the time I got some mile markers for you guys, um, every six months, I want you to take as much cash as you can and I want you to put it in a five year CD. I don't care right now if it's $310. You need to do it. Why, Matt? Because it's discipline. And then every six months, like clockwork, you just set a, a, a reminder in your Google Calendar or your calendar to do this every six months. You take all the cash that you have, right, in that savings account, and you put it into a five-year CD. I don't give a shit what the interest rate is. This is discipline, and it's holding you accountable to that discipline. Let's see. Never spend more than you can afford is rule number 14. So this also goes into kind of what we've talked about in some of the earlier rules, but if it's too much money and it's gonna stress out your bank account and stress out your budget, you cannot afford it. Don't buy it, go back to your job. What, what, what did I say that? Uh, number two, and make more. Be better at your craft, better at what you're doing, now you have something to work towards, right? That is what I'm saying. Never spend more than you can afford, okay? Don't buy the truck or the whatever that you cannot afford to pay cash for. And if you don't have $62,000 for that brand new truck, car, or whatever, well, guess what? You ain't buying it. No, you need to get something that's 20 or 30 grand with some miles on it if someone else has ran through that thing. Um, speaking of that 40%, the savings is off limits. You were never allowed to touch that money. Well, why is it there? Well, the reason is for the unknown. Or um, you start to, what I like to do is I call this my nut. You never take away from that. What you wanna do is take that savings and put it in vehicles that pay you every month to own them. We'll talk about that at the end here. And that's what my favorite subject is real estate. Um, so the savings is always off limits. So rule number 23, I got some milestones for you. Rule number 16, do not spend to impress others. Whether it's been on a date, buying a piece of jewelry for a loved one you can't afford, um, showing off a vacation or a trip or a car or a house or whatever. No, do not spend to impress. Social media influencers do this shit all the time. Generally, it's somebody standing in front of a rented Lambo or they're just at the dealership taking pictures. Hootie ha, I got a car. You know what, that's not the dream anymore. I hate to break it to you. The dream is to have an awesome life. Okay, number 17. Treat all of your money as if you worked for it. Yes, worked. Put in time, hours. Right now, you're gonna have to trade a lot of your time for money. Later on in life, I'm gonna teach you guys how to uh, trade your money for time. <coughs> See what I did there? So right now you're trading your time for money to get it, but now with different investment vehicles you can do, safe and secure ones that pay you to own them, will pay you, which ultimately means you have to work less so you have your time. Number 18, know your numbers and always have a budget. Always, always, always have a budget. Understand what your business is doing. Understand what your personal finances are doing. Understand with what your job is doing. Understand that your de the department that you're in at your job is doing. Know the numbers behind all of this. Do not freaking use, I'm just bad with math, blah, 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 blah. Dude, it's subtraction, addition, and multiplication. Don't tell me I'm bad with math. Everybody's got a calculator on their freaking iPhone. Figure it out. Know your numbers. Number 19 is quite practical. Okay. These little phantom BS charges, all these subscriptions and services and all these things, 
that are $15, $12, $20, $100, $80, gym memberships you never go to, um, subscriptions on apps that you don't know exist. Dude, you could be spending thousands of dollars a month on these freaking subscriptions. It's ridiculous. It's freaking ridiculous. No. Buy it once, use it, done. Get on your parents' Netflix account as long as you possibly can. You don't need all these TV subscriptions. Hulu, Hallelujah, uh, whatever. Netflix, Amazon, no. Get off that shit. Disney Plus, Discovery, whatever. No, those phantom charges, dude, 10 bucks in one year is $120. $100, so if you got all these charges, is is $1,200. All that money could have been gone to savings. Number 20, if it's too good to be true, it is too good to be true. 99 times out of 100, if it was too good to be true, it was too good to be true, and you got swindled. So no, don't do it. 12, no, 22, cars. You're buying only for a, or excuse me, you're buying used only for a very long time. Um, it's a tough pill for most people to swallow because most people finance cars the way of the world and how it works and no you should never finance a vehicle and you never use your savings the 40 percent rule savings that money doesn't go to cars guys that is for future investments well how do i save up then matt well you got to take it from the 60. see what i did there you do not want to get into a life of payments a life of payments makes you a slave they figured out how to bring slavery back, and here it is. It's financial slavery. They get you to go into these JOBs day after day, month after month, and all you're doing is paying for all your bills. And you get this, when you drive a brand new vehicle off the lot, you get this warm, buzzy feeling like, hey, everybody, check out my new car, blah, blah, blah. That's over in a week, and then you're stuck with this freaking thing for four or five years. When you buy a brand new vehicle and take it off the lot, by the way, it loses 10% of its value instantly. The moment you drive it off that lot. What does that mean? That means because a brand new vehicle holds a certain value that only the dealership can get. A private citizen selling that vehicle cannot get the value that a dealership can. That's why you always let some other idiot take the hit on the vehicle and then you buy it when it's got 20 to 30,000 miles on it. You may not be able to afford a vehicle with that low of mileage right now, and that's okay. Get yourself a Honda or a Toyota. Those things will go to 300,000 miles. You need to drive a shit box. I don't care, and you shouldn't care either. If it gets you from A to B and it's safe and it's a good vehicle, good to go. All right, milestones. Um, rule number 23. Okay, you're 18 years old right now. You should have $5,000 in the bank account, minimum. You just graduated? five grand do you have five grand ask yourself that you got 10 doing good do you have 20 30 don't you dare freaking spend it i'm serious when you're 25 years old you should have a hundred thousand dollars in that savings investment vehicle all cds that's where it should all be dump it into those cds when you're 30 250k cash 40, $500,000, and by the time you're 50, if not sooner, million dollars liquid. You realize 0.0001% of the United States has more than $50,000 in the bank account? That's it. Most people have zero money. Case of an emergency, a catastrophic failure, whatever the case may be, you have to think of money as a lifeblood to living. And when you do that, guys, when you have that kind of money in the bank, you're gonna be in such a happy place. And it's not because of greed. It's because of not having that money is gonna make you do things you don't wanna do. Let's say your boss, let's say you got two kids at home. Now I'm talking to you when you're 30. Or maybe, whatever, it doesn't matter. I forget about age for a moment. Um, you got two kids at home, husband or wife, whatever. Mortgage, cars daycare, 
all these things going on and your boss asks you to do something that's against your morals i don't know what it is guys maybe lie on a form or tell some customer wrong information that you know that goes against you and your faith in the core of you being a human being well when you have all those bills you're probably going to do it and i don't blame you if you do do it i don't i don't blame you for selling out because you need to make the money but if you have this kind of cash in the bank you'll tell them to fuck off and walk out of the building that is a fact and I want you to be in a place like that I want you to be in a place where you want to go to work every day you love the job that you're doing and if somebody tells you to do something that you know not to be true you can tell them no I'm not doing that because if you tell them that most likely you're getting fired but that's good anyways because they were dipshit all right, a couple more rules I wanted to add. I've been thinking about this for so long. I got notes scattered everywhere. Um, when you're 30, by the way, that 60-40 rule drops to 50-50. Now you're really making some money and you've been paying cash for everything, maybe except your home up until this point. Um, so now you have so much money coming in because you have hardly any debt obligations other than maybe a mortgage you don't have car debt you don't have student loan debt you follow the system now it switches to 50 50. when you turn 40 it switches to 25 75. you live off 25 percent of your income and you save 75 percent when you get to 50 it's 10 percent or zero because now you have investments investment vehicles that have been out there um that have been doing their thing for long that are dripping into your bank account. And that's what you need. Because I am a firm believer that you need multiple streams of income, but you can't you can't um, worry about, like, I, I want you to have 10 streams of income by the time, you know, your early 30s or late 20s. Um, 10, 10 streams of income. You gotta start each one and see it through. You can't just, I'm gonna go set up 10 real quick. That's not how it works. You gotta get laser focused on one, get that churning butter, and let that start dripping into your bank account. Um, okay, uh, a couple little practical things. Uh, furniture, big box retailers. Stay out, never go in there, as long as you live. Furniture is, that stuff is so overpriced you, let me tell you right now, you can get nice shit on Facebook Marketplace. Until you have that million in the bank, you ain't going and dropping no 15, 20K on freaking furniture at Ashley Furniture. No. Don't be going in there getting a 36 months, 0% either. If you can pay cash for stuff, you're going to get a better deal. I buy couches on Facebook Marketplace for 20% of what they sell for in the store that are in good condition. You do not need to do that. You do not need to be the first butt that sits in the chair. All butts stink. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Oh, man. I don't know what rule number this is, but this boom bit me in the ass hard. Cost me, Blair and I, $9,000 when we can barely afford it. Never co sign for anybody. Never, never, never. If I don't want you to get a loan on a house or a car or a credit card or anything like that, damn sure don't be using your credit to co sign for somebody else. All that means is when you co-sign for that, is that you're signing that they can't pay it. So I'm gonna have to pay it. It's different if you do it for your kids. I wouldn't do it for your kids either, but, because why would they need to finance anything? They're paying cash for everything. Not my cash. Oh no. Oh no. My kids don't get a penny. They gotta go work. Go, let's go, let's hustle. I'll show you how. Worst thing you can do to your kids is put them on a payroll or give them money every, all the time like that, you know, if that they're not working for. Um, it happened to my brother and me, man. We was getting paid and uh, early on and wasn't working. Good Lord, thank goodness I didn't turn into a sh too much of a shithead. Don't ask my wife, that's debatable. Okay, um, real estate. 
you made it this far, 35 minutes into this video, good Lord, I hope I can get this thing uploaded. Probably have to put it in a Google Drive or something. So, real estate. When you get to a comfortable, safe place of over $50,000, no, yeah, over 50, over $50,000 in that savings account that is for investments, that's the 40%. Um, now I want you looking at real estate. And this is a much broader conversation, so this might be part two. If you get to this, I want you to uh, message me, text me, DM me, however you got this video, whatever, and say, Matt, I would like, uh, I'd like to watch part two. I'm gonna give you a little taste of it, but I want you to buy as much real estate as you freaking can in your life, because this is the one vehicle that you can use leverage to leverage up the return. What do you mean by that? Okay, we will take very simple numbers real quick. Um, this is the difference between the stock market and real estate. So the stock market, I have to give them 10,000, let's say $10,000. I give them $10,000 liquid. Well, how much stocks can I buy? I can only buy $10,000 worth of stocks. Okay, so I've got $10,000 worth of stocks over here in this one little bucket. Now let's also say I take the same 10 or a different $10,000 and I go buy a house and I have to put 10% down and I finance the 90%. Well, you said don't get loans. Oh, hang on with me, follow me here. So I take the $10,000 and I put it down on that house, the $100,000 house. Now I have a $100,000 asset that I now own. Now I owe the bank 90 grand on that. But if I get it cash flowing, what I mean by that is we get somebody in there to pay us to own it, whether that's a long-term tenant or you do Airbnb or short-term rental or whatever you do, you're getting someone else to pay that. I am not talking about your own home. I'm talking about buying that and letting somebody else to pay you to own it. So they're sending you money every month as your tenant or your guest in the property. So what do you have now? You have over here, you have an asset that's $100,000. And over here, you have a second asset that's $10,000. Both you put in $10,000 each. They go up 20% in value. So the stocks go up 20%. Good day for stocks, man. Now I got $12,000 over here. The real estate went up 20%. What did it do? it went to $120,000. So it's the difference between gaining $2,000 and $20,000. See what I did there? Also, that tenant, let's say it took 10 years, or excuse me, two years for that to go up like that, both of both of them to go up 10% a piece. You've been, your tenant's been paying down that mortgage for you. So now you only owe the bank $84,000. And it's worth 120. And now there's a $36,000 equity in that. 36,000 minus the 10 is a $26,000 gain to you. On the real estate side of things, or excuse me, the stock market side of things, it's still only 12 grand. So it's the difference between $26,000 and $2,000. Now, you need to be quite a bit of an expert to invest in real estate. It is risky, but for me, doing nothing is riskier. I want to own hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of property because the values over time continue to go up. Inflation, which is where the government prints money, they're never gonna stop, and appreciation, which the supply and demand pushes the value up, like sticks and bricks, drywall, mud, carpet, shingles, all these building materials get more expensive over time. So if they've already been placed on something, which is a home, right, it's going to trend up with those other items. So that's why I wanna own as much as I can because ultimately that will be worth so much more than the stocks I have. Now, I do have a very good uh, person that I work with that manages my family's stock portfolio, right? 
Um, and I do think that that's still an important asset because you wanna be a little diversified. But make sure uh, when it comes to the stock side of things that you really do your homework and you get referrals on someone you trust. Um, and I will say that it should be something where you send them drips for a while, whether it's $200, $300, $1,000, whatever, whatever it may be. Maybe it's an IRA or a 401k or whatever um, that you're tossing in money, at, whether their stocks are up or down so that they can buy those. And their fees should be less than uh, 1%, 1% or less. And they should not be paid on buying and selling trades because that doesn't do benefit to uh, their clients. So I work with somebody very good. If you're interested in that name and if you made it to 40 minutes in this video, I'll happily share their information with you. Um, those are my rules of money. Uh, I guarantee you I'm probably gonna think of a couple more as time goes on. But I wanna make sure that you can watch this video more than once. Uh, I'm gonna send it out. And if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And uh, I wish you the best on your financial journey. Look forward to seeing great things. Bye.